Well, welcome to Ridercam TV's next instalment of what we fit into our bike. And today we've got some Givy hand guards. Um, they're the tinted version and they should fit the 1200 GS, the GS Adventure and a whole host of other bikes, so check them out. The reason that I've picked these is because I won't have to drill any holes anywhere in the handlebars. Literally, they fit with two fitments. One hole there, which is the end one, and then a hole there for the screw, which goes in there. So we're going to start fitting them. So here's a close-up view of the Givy hand guards. This one's a little bit dirty because it came off my other bike, but it's just, it's really hard plastic, and it's moulded to the shape of the inside of the hand guard that's already fitted on the BMW. So they will just fit inside and really easily fit inside, and when they're in there, they'll give a lot more hand protection to, or a lot more protection to your hands when you're riding along and there's lots of wind. I've noticed that my hands have got very, very cold over the last few days. The temperature out there today while I was riding was about one and a half degrees and it was really quite cold. Some of you will say, well, I should wear the correct gloves, but I have got some good gloves, but this will just keep my hands shielded from the wind a little bit more. Now they do come with instructions as you would imagine and on the instructions it shows and it provides an extra screw washer and kind of a, a longer washer I don't know what you call that but a spacer and then it's, it says use the same bolt number six is original parts the same bar end which is in there the silver piece and then they give you another little spacer that you can use which is there, then the bar end fits in underneath and it's all fitted. So we're going to go ahead and fit that one. So in order to fit these handy guards in here or take these ones off, you need two tools. You need a tool for there and a tool for there. That one's a 25 torque screw and this one is a 50 torque screw. So um, this one's quite a, quite a lot tighter than the other one. Um, so we're just going to whip them off. Bear in mind when you're doing this, inside there is a bolt, just one rather long bolt if the camera focuses, and then inside you've got a weight as well, so you'll need to keep hold of the weight, and then you've got the bar end, so just make sure that you keep them all safe. Now these come off quite easily and you can see that there's a hole there and a hole there and you don't need to worry about a washer or a nut falling off behind it because it's just one I guess self tapper but it goes into this bit here which is already secured on the bike so as you can see they are exactly the same shape and they just literally that fits in literally inside the already molded one and adds a really lovely finish without horrible holes being screwed in to have to attach it to your bike. As it says on the instructions, we've got a spacer there which needs to go over onto there. That then just literally fits right through. Now just be careful that all of it goes through the hole of the hole, so don't lose that spacer. And that spacer is meant to fit into the groove in there just to help the weight stand out a little bit more so that this isn't in the wrong place for screwing that screw in. Now they do add extra pieces of kit for the other side as we mentioned, so the spacer goes over the screw and then through that little spacer. Now the annoying thing for this is that you then have to have a number three Allen key. And you all know what an Allen key looks like because they've changed the head of the screw. 
obviously it's not a BMW product if it was a BMW product you would probably looking at a torque screw but it's a an allen key so literally just feed it through the hole making sure you don't lose that spacer when you're screwing this one in that washer will will literally sit flush so all you need to do is feed it all the way through and then locate the hole once you've located the hole and you've got a bit of pinch on it literally screw it in until it's tight and don't over tighten there's no need it's not holding anything but make sure it's firm in there that it's not going to come out again and there we are it's flush absolutely flush now what's left to do is just cinch this up this bolt just so it's tight because it's still loose it just enables me to move it to where I need it and because I like to try and get things as good as good as I can I've literally got that part centered up with my clutch lever and there we have it This is fitted inside so hopefully you can see that it follows the contour all the way around and provides a really smooth surface and where your hands are you can see the distance above a good inch above the top part but they really fill this gap in and that's where my hands were getting cold so Time to go out on the bike and see what they're like. Well, already I've been on the road for about five minutes. Although the temperature has risen to five degrees, from one and a half this morning, I'm already feeling a benefit. The fact that the air is blown up over, as opposed to where BMWs have finished, they really do extend it. It's probably about an inch at my first finger, at my forefinger, and where the plastic drops down, the BMW plastic drops down, just down here, I must have at least two and a half, three inches of extra protection, extra wind protection for my hands, which is quite good. I guess that it will enable my hands to stay a little bit warmer, because despite having the heated grips even on setting two this morning my hands on top of my hands were absolutely frozen and I just wear normal gloves they're probably not the best for winter but they're comfortable and I just needed something to chuck that cold air away from my hands and already after only a few minutes of riding I noticed that my hands are feeling a lot warmer and I've got my heated handlebars on setting one so they're already having a dramatic effect.